Hi guys, it's Rick Shields down here at Quest Golf Academy here at Prairie Sports Village. And I've got a very interesting review. These are the brand new Cobra King forged one length clubs. And as you can see, they are all the same length. From the four iron, the five, six, seven, eight, nine pitch wedge and gap wedge are all the same length as the standard seven iron. It's gonna be quite interesting. Now, let's talk about why that is the case. I'm gonna grab the seven just for a moment. What single length clubs are designed to do is to eliminate any variability. So the fact that you have to change your swing that much. If it's the same length and the same lie angle, every single golf club is the same lie angle as the uh, standard seven iron. Therefore the swing should stay the same. And the only thing that changes distance is the loft. It's gonna be quite interesting. Now this is not a new design. This has been out 30 years, actually in the 80s, early 80s, clubs came out in single length, but they were kind of squashed pretty quickly. And I would only put that down to probably the fact that launch monitors weren't as freely to use. People weren't using launch monitors as they do every day now. So actually be able to prove that single length golf clubs worked was probably much harder back then. But then, probably in the 80s, the man Bryson DeChambeau was born. And last year he won the amateur championship. He's turned professional now and he signed for Cobra. And Bryson DeChambeau, incredibly clever guy, um, kind of came up with the idea of using single length clubs, or he's the most, probably didn't come up with the idea, that's probably the wrong statement, but he was, he's the most highly profile player right now who's using single length clubs. So when Cobra signed him, it was only a matter of time before we saw a single length set come from Cobra. There are two single length clubs, or one length clubs, there's these, which is the Cobra King Forged, so the player's irons, which are a bit more bladed, and then there's the F7 Forged, the F7 being the bigger version. Now, to confuse things more, there is also a Forged Tour standard length, so the four iron is, is longer than the gap wedges you would see, as you and me would know as being a normal set, and then there is the F7 variable length as well, which I will test, I'm not sure when, but I will test all of those clubs. What I'm gonna to do today is test these just on their own now, and then do a head-to-head -head with these and the variable length clubs as well. I think that'll be really interested to see actually what is the difference. Now, don't just think straight away before watching this video, oh, it's fine, I'll just cut my five iron down and, and make my pitching wedge longer. It's not quite as simple as that. As much as, yes, they are all the same length as a seven iron, because they've had to reduce the length of, let's say, a four iron, they've actually had to add more loft, so be, uh, sorry, not more loft, more weight in the head. So because they've shortened the length of a four iron, there's more weight actually in the head to counter out at it. A bit like the gap wedge, because the gap wedge is, which one's this one? Is short and much longer than the standard gap wedge. They've actually had to reduce weight out of the head to make it work. Because otherwise, if it was the same weight as a normal gap wedge and the same length, it just wouldn't work. So. Let's hit some shots. First off, looking at these clubs, they are beautiful clubs. They are, really are. Massive big king symbol at the back, blue and orange detailing and very silver and just a pretty looking golf club. Um, it, with regards to whether these are one length or not, they are a beautiful looking club. Let's hit some shots. So I'm gonna just very quickly, and I know it's a bit, it's not really necessary, but I'll just hit a couple of quick seven irons just to show you, give you some feedback actually on the clubs first. So. Just as a pointer as well, because these are, let's say, influenced by Bryson DeChambeau, they are just normal standard grips. Bryson DeChambeau typically uses jumbo thick grips. That's still an option to get thicker grips or thinner grips, but that doesn't come as standard because obviously everyone's hand sizes are different. So it's just the fact that the same length and same lie angle. Let's hit this 7.9 first. This is 33 degrees of loft. Felt so good off the head. Oh, it might just be a little bit short of that green. That felt lovely off the head. Um, it's not a super strong iron, so I'm not expecting it to go a million miles. Lovely soft feel. I'll just go one more with the seven, just to give you an idea. Like I say, it's not really about this club. It's about the ones that are on the extreme factor of this. I'll just go one more. Yeah, it feels great. Feels very, very nice. Right, so that's the, the seven iron. Just to give you an idea of what that club is doing and how it's feeling. But 
I would expect it to feel pretty good. Right, it's when you go into the world of a four iron that is a seven iron length. Now, without comparing it to a seven, if I set that up, I would be convinced this is way shorter than the seven iron. It feels tiny, but it's only actually when you compare it to the seven does it start feeling the same. But because of the lack of loft of the four iron, as soon as I put that down, I'm like, no way is that a seven iron that length. It feels really short. Let's hit some shots with this. Now, the idea behind the one length is that the setup shouldn't need to change. Now, on initial testing, the only thing that I found that still needs to change is the ball position. I was finding if I put the four iron ball position too central, I was hitting down too much and not getting a good strike. So I still like to have that four iron slightly further forward. But apart from that, setup felt the same. Setup felt identical. In fact, I've not pulled that uh, flag back. Let me just pull that flag back so we can, uh, we can see the shot. Okay, so I'll just pull this back to 200 yards. Now, I typically swing a seven iron about 90 miles per hour. Because of the length, this, should, this swing, this club should still swing 90 miles per hour or near enough, where normally a four iron, I'd be swinging nearer to 95 miles per hour. Let's see what that does on distance and flight. It's a very nice hit. But I would say, it's a good, good result actually. I would say without properly doing a head to head, which I will do, that visually is coming out way lower than what I would see a four iron. I suppose because I'm, I'm not generating enough club head speed, I'm not getting the height there at all. It feels like it's coming out really flat. It feels like a knockdown seven iron that's just going a long way <laughs> because it, that's kind of what the club, the shaft design is making you feel like you're gonna do. Yeah, really low for a four iron that. And it's coming out like an absolute bullet. First ever holding one, ooh. But it's coming out like an absolute bullet. I think the shorter length four iron, longer irons are gonna help a lot of people. Because again, you, you, when I coach and, and I ask the guys, what's your favorite iron? And they go, oh, seven iron. I love my seven iron. I love my seven iron, my eight iron, my nine iron, my pitching wedge. But you get your guy who goes, I hate my six iron, my five iron, my four iron. Now, a lot of that will be related to loft. The less loft you start to play with, the harder it, the shot becomes. But some of that also will be length. And I think this is not only a good idea for established golfers, I think it'll take established golfers a little bit of time to get used to it. But what I see it working really nice for is new golfers. Because then they don't have to change so many things. You imagine as a new golfer, all the things you've got to remember from the grip, the stance, the distance, everything, well this, makes things a little bit simpler. Now, I've moved into the gap wedge. And again, without comparing it to seven iron, that gap wedge feels ridiculously long. It feels like, it feels like a three iron. Just visually, because I'm seeing the loft and I'm not expecting this length of club with that much loft, it feels super long. But again, it's only actually when I compare it to, I don't know which club's which now, seven, do we know it's the same? And that, that's what's really weird about it. I can hold this gap wedge and I'm convinced this gap wedge, even just, even just now, because I know it's a gap wedge in my head, it feels so long. Now, what I would be scared about is how far would I hit a gap wedge swinging at 90 miles per hour? Let's see. So that's gone really high for a gap wedge. Obviously I've not moved the green there, but that went so, so high. And that's carried, I don't know, almost in fairness, slightly shorter than a, a standard gap wedge. That's at 118. Um, let's see what the club head speed and the, oh wow. The one number that's really stood out to me straight away from a gap wedge, the spin number there then was over 10,000 RPM. Now 10,000 RPM on a gap wedge I've never seen before. And that's not because so much the, the head technology is any different, it's because I'm generating more speed. 
got more length of swing to generate more of a of a pen, uh, of more club head speed as I hit the shot. That went really high up in the air though. Unlike where the four iron went super low, this felt like it went to, to the moon and back. I've got to remember to stand like a seven iron though. Oh, so unbelievably high that shot. Unbelievably high. Now I will do again, down the line, a bit of a gapping test between all these golf clubs because I think that's important to see actually what is the gapping between every single one of these clubs. Is the gapping big enough because of the change of loft? Now another shot that I would be kind of interested is can I still play like a knockdown shot? Can I grip down on it and you know play this at like a hundred yards? It felt doable. It felt very doable. It's mega interesting, this idea. It's so interesting. It really does. It intrigues me more than anything. It intrigues me to see whether you do become more consistent with a one length set of clubs. Do you think you would? I'm, do you think it would make sense for a lot of players to use the kind of those one length clubs? Because it's it's taking out those variables. Now, personally for me, the only sticking point that I would find is the six, the five, the four iron, potentially I don't think I'm gonna get enough height on those shots. I don't think the club head speed of 90, I can generate enough height to be able to get that to land and stop into greens. It, they just come out, they're coming out way too low. Where a standard four iron, five iron that would hit would be much, much higher than those. So interesting, I will do some head to heads. I'll do some one length or single one length clubs against what they're classing as variable length. I would see, I don't know variable, I don't like that word. I think more just kind of standard length compared to one length. Or are these going to become standard? You know what's going to be also very interesting? Who's going to follow this? Now these aren't the only one length clubs that are out on the market at the moment. There, there really isn't. But probably the only one mainstream brand that have got one length clubs out, you know, high street brand, there is other one length clubs available, but these are probably the first high street brand that have brought out one length clubs. And I don't think they would have done it unless they had Bryson DeChambeau. Very interesting to see the difference between these, or lack of differences between these clubs. Guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please do click thumbs up, comment below. What do you think about the one length revolution that's gonna to start to take place? Are you interested in testing it? Do you, th do you think now that because we've got more launch ones, do you think it'll stick around a bit more now? I think it could do. Guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video and we'll see you soon.